هرچند بادش بود Heard anything? Paul Martin is on the trans American plane due in an hour. What well, do you think he's bringing the formula with him? This isn't a health resort for government chemists. Martin's formula is one of the most important military secrets ever discovered. It is imperative that we get it for our own purposes. There will be no excuse for failure. Remember that. You are to meet him at the airport and persuade him to go with you. You know where it's to be taken. Just one thing. Wilton and I have never seen Martin before. Maybe he's not using his right name. His sister will point him out to you. I don't understand. This message says for her not to come to the plane. But I am certain she'd rather be there to meet her brother. And you too will form a welcoming committee. Telegram, Miss Jan. Oh, thank you, Rod. Do you know what time the Trans American plane is due? It's due in at 3.30, but I'm expecting it at 4. You're expecting it at 4? Yes, and well, you see, I've got a little bit on it. It is a half hour late. Why, well, only last week I brought the SS Washington in three hours ahead of schedule. You bet on things like that? Oh, yes, and I bet on anything. I'm the poor man's lords of London. <laughs> Línea de Miami, vuelo segundo. Acaba de aterrizar. Un momento de espera. Trans American plane from Miami, flight two, just landed. Please stand by. about being a stranger in Panama. We simply love strangers. And I insist that you have dinner at our house. Oh, I'm sorry, I never eat. Oh, but... Uh... Oh, no, no, doctor's order. Oh, I see. Oh, 
sorry. Thank you. Stranger in Panama. Well. That's our man, all right. Well, are you the welcoming committee? Please pretend we're very good friends. Well, of course. Uh, darling, darling, it's been so long. Every day seemed like a year, even longer. Well, how am I doing? I said friends. <laughs> you haven't met my friends. Please, I'm in terrible trouble. You can help me. Oh, now, you're too pretty to be in serious trouble. You will help me? Well, my armor's a little rusty, but... I... We can get a cab. All right. Taxi, best taxi in Panama. Okay. Hotel La Esposita, and hurry, please. La Esposita. Right. So you see, there was nothing else I could do. My husband follows me everywhere. I don't blame him. You don't know what it's like to be married to an insanely jealous man. No, I don't. Well, he used to beat me. No. Whip. You don't believe me. Strange your husband never had time to buy you a wedding ring. Oh, that, well, you see, I had to pawn it. <laughs> oh, save it. If you'd worn a wedding ring for two years, it'd have been a mark. You see, bachelors are trained to look for things like that. Oh, now it wasn't that bad a joke. We're on the wrong road. He's taking us away from the hotel. Maybe that's the reason it's the best taxi in Panama. Look. They're following us. Get him to hurry. Step on it. I said step on it. Just don't move and you'll be all right. Coming closer. Hold tight. Well, he's gone crazy. Did you do that on purpose? It can only miss once. Have you ever tried it before? Once in Europe. I was trying to get out of the country with a new scoop. It was a mountain road with a drop of 2,000 feet. What happened? Well, I'm still here. See anything of our playmates? I think we've lost them. I want to thank you, Mr. Lawrence, Mike Lawrence. Haven't I seen that name somewhere? Oh, we've probably met under a headline, Miss. Uh... Oh, yes, Michael Lawrence. I've read your articles. They're very exciting. Uh, we should tell it to my editor. What were you doing at the airport? Oh, I was to meet someone, but it became too dangerous with those men following me. I see. So I became the other man, huh? Well, yes. I was on a spot, and that was the first thing that occurred to me. 
Oh, this must seem very curious to you. Curious? Ripley would have a picnic. Who were those two men? What were they doing following you? Well, that's just it. I don't know. I've never seen them before. Oh, but I have to make a call and make sure that everything's all right. Will you pull up over there, please? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. I'll be waiting, Miss... Uh... This is one time you can go as fast as you like, brother. It's on the house. Nice going, gal. Hiya, sis. Paul. <laughs> oh, I was so worried. For a minute at the airport, I thought you'd give yourself away. Say, why did you come to the airport? I asked you not to in my telegram. Well, Paul, there was nothing like that in the telegram. Well, I expected trouble. What is it, Paul? Why should those men want you? I've done it, Jan. A thousand experiments, three years. But it finally works. You don't mean the protective paint. Yeah, but I do mean the protective paint. Oh, I knew you'd make it, Paul. I'm so proud of you. Well, the credit really belongs to a new compound. Like most discoveries, it was an accident. I knocked over a test tube, two chemicals shook hands, and there it was. But what are you doing here in Panama? I brought the formula down for them to test on the canal defenses. I'll be going back to Washington right away. It's, it's big, Jan. And there are a lot of people who'd like to get their hands on it. Well, then you'll be in danger. Oh, I'll be all right. And the formula's safe. It's in a vault in Washington. And, uh, in my mind. I, I don't think you'd better stay here, Paul. It, it's not safe. That telegram... Yeah, you're right. I'll be at the Royal Grove Hotel under the name of Collins, if you want me. You will be careful. Oh, we're the Martin stock. Toughest kids in the block, remember? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about Mike Lawrence? Oh, he was wonderful. Yeah, I know, but the men who are after me think he's your brother. It may get him in trouble. Well, I've seen him in action. If they get tough with him, it's their hard luck. All right. <laughs> Did everything work out? Martin. Uh, Martin drove like a madman. Martin drove? You mean he got the cab away from you? Well, it wasn't my fault. I got Martin into the cab, and they hadn't have been such cowards. Why, I... you... Save it, Wilton. You knew how important it was for us to get Martin. Yet you let him get away. I did what I was told and failed. Now get out of here. All right. All right. Be where I can find you. We may need you again. Exactly. What happened? Well, we started down the road after him and... I'll take your baggage, sir. Rodriguez Lincoln Jones is the name, sir. That sounds like a lot of name. Yes, sir. I sort of adopted that Rodriguez. But just think what I could do with it back in Harlem. <laughs> is this the law, Esposita? Yes, sir. Nothing different. Good. Uh, what you want me to do with this cab? If nobody calls for it in 30 days, it's yours. Glory be. I got myself some new collateral. 
sorry. My fault. Entirely my fault. Mind if I look at the register? Anything you want to know about this hotel, sir, just ask me. Oh, sort of a local information, please, huh? Well, I ease and I observe. Well, I'll take you up on that sometime. All right, sir. Right this way, please. What's happened can't be helped now. But Martin, and you've got to find him. He won't get away again. Make certain of that. You two are the only ones in Panama who know what Martin looks like. His tricks won't help him this time. Don't be sorry you picked the Esposito. Best service in town. That's me. And the best food. Well, that all helps, but I'm looking for a certain young lady. Well, who ain't? This is it, sir. We men all have that woman trouble. Well, I have a hunch the girl I'm looking for may be here at the Esposito. Well, if she's here, sir, I know her. She's blonde and blue-eyed. Yes, sir. And at the airport, she gave the driver this address. If I catch up with it, there's going to be fireworks. Fireworks? Airport? Blonde? No, sir, there ain't no girl like that around here. Well, I'll find her if she is here. Oh, uh, what time is dinner served? You ain't going to eat dinner in this hotel. Well, why not? Why, the food's so bad, even the chef won't eat it. When we've got a chef. Well, a few minutes ago, you said this was the best food in town. <laughs> yes, sir. I's your friend now. There's a wonderful place down the street a bit. If that's all, sir, uh, I'll... Oh. There you are. Thanks for the tip. Thanks for yours, sir. Miss Jan, there's a man in this hotel, and I think he's looking for you in trouble boat. A man? Yes, ma'am. Described you perfectly. And I knows you's at the airport today. What does this man look like? Well, he, he signed the book Michael Lawrence, he did. And he sure looked like the wrong man to fool with. He is looking for me. I don't blame him. Well, if there's anything I can do, Miss Jan, I think I got him deed away from the hotel. Oh, I can handle this myself, all right. The important thing is that he doesn't see me. He knows what Jan Martin looks like, but Dolores Estaban is a complete stranger. That wig show gets me confused, Miss Jan. I can't get it through my head. An American girl has to come down here to become a Latin singer just to go back to the States again. But show business travels in cycles, Rod. This year, Latin singers are the vote. So? This is our new South American discovery, the Loris Estaba. I'm still confused. And Mr. Lawrence, he ain't gonna be no better off. Well, let me have some of that bourbon, please. Triple. Triple? Mm-hmm. I, uh, I have a bad cold. Oh, that is your stomach. Good, that, that'll do. Hey, what was in that drink? Oh, the light. That is for our singer, Senorita Esteban. Madame's in a far off land, and she seeks a gay companion. Though she won't know his name, the language of love's the same. There's a continental cost. If you wish, senor, to call When there's been no introduction Madame will drop her shawl It may happen at the opera Or while dancing at the ball To attract the caballero Madame will drop her shawl Do not 
think her shy, senor. If she like your smile, she will wink her eyes, senor. And in a little while from the lady's fingertips, and at your feet a rose will fall. Press the rose up to your lips, and madame will drop the shawl. There's a continental custom, if you wish, senor, to call. When there's been no introduction, madame will drop the shawl. It may happen at the opera, or while dancing at the ball, to attract the caballero. Madame will rock her shawl. Do not think her shy, senor. If she likes your smile, she will wink her eyes, senor. And in a little while, from the lady's fingertips, then at your feet a rose will fall. Press the rose up to your lips, then Madame will rock her shawl. I know it isn't exactly original, but haven't we met somewhere before? Oh, I, I, I think not, senor. You've been in Panama long? No, I only arrived today. Oh, and I have never met. So it is impossible, no? Well, I guess so. But I can't help having a feeling I've seen you somewhere before. <laughs> but you have a drink? A drink? Gracias, senor. Uh, leche, por favor. That's for me. Make mine double. Huh? So you have been in Panama only one day. Do you think you will like it? Well, what I can see of it is lovely. Uh -huh. Your voice deserves a better setting than this. Have you ever thought of New York? You'd set them on their collective ear. Oh, yes, I have thought of New York. But New York has so many beautiful blonde girls. Hmm, just let those New York wolves get one load of you in the peroxide market and fall off like a shot. But I thought the gentleman preferred blondes. Yeah, but who wants to be a gentleman? I will go to New York someday. I'd like to show it to you. Perhaps, senor. Uh, but you, have you met no one in Panama? Well, five minutes ago, the answer would have been no. Oh, you say charming things, senor. You and I should get to know each other, como no? Como yes. <laughs> to como no and como yes. Well, that's milk. Oh, and very good for you, senor. Oh, well, uh, I must go now. We will meet again, no? I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> Did it work, Senorita Estrada? Only too well, Miss Martin. Don't make a move. You're looking for your cab. It's downstairs. Don't try any more of your tricks. Okay, but would you mind telling me what this is all about? It's simple. Plenty of people are willing to buy the information you have. I can sell it as easily as they can. And I found you first. I still don't get it. Things are happening too fast around here. Perhaps I can refresh your memory. Oh, wait a minute. My memory's not going to be any better with a hole in it. What kind of information am I to have? Don't pretend. Talk quickly. All right, you win. I wouldn't try that if I were you. I'm only going to phone for some drinks. We might as well be comfortable. Sit down. Make sure that's all you phone for. Room service. This is room 715. Will you send up some drinks? I found a new place, mister. Is he dead? Yes, he is. Y you didn't? No, no, of course not. The murderer must have got out over the balcony. You didn't <laughs> see anybody coming down the hall. No, sir. Who, who is that? That's something else I've got to find out. Oh, my. We better lock this door. I don't want anything touched until the police come. Yes, sir. 
Something tells me that Harlem's population is going to be increased by one. And I do mean me. Here, keep this key. Murder? But that's impossible, Mr. Lawrence. Nothing like that ever happened at the hotel. And somebody's playing a pretty grim joke on the man of my room. I see the two, Mr. Burns. Let me have that key. We lock the door, the police will find everything exactly as it was. That was very clever, Mr. Lawrence. I'll call the police immediately. Excuse me. I gotta go see someone. You better not make yourself too scarce. Oh, no, sir. Police headquarters. Oh, senor, everyone they talk about sending for the police. Is anything wrong? Plenty. A cab driver was murdered in my room a few moments ago. In your room? Did you know him? Well, we'd never met socially, but I did have a set to with him this afternoon. You know, this whole day's been a puzzle with all the important pieces missing. Oh, you must be careful, senor. I will be. Those policemen are here, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, good. Is this the hombre que no el cuerpo? Mr. Lawrence uh, reported the murder. Oh, see? Where is the body? In my room. Why did you do it? Why did I do it? Now, wait a minute. Oh, I must cover all possibilities. That is police procedure. Take us to your room. I will look at these corpses of yours. Well, it's not exactly mine, but come ahead. Siga me. Right over there. You have taken care that nothing was touched. The door was locked all the time. Ya ven, es el muy inteligente. Tiene la puerta cerrada. A very bad joke, señor. Hey, what is this? You have eyes, have you not? Which one of these men is the cop's talk does not amuse me, señor. When a stiletto buries it, it's no joke. It looks like a nice, neat frame-up. Well, if there was a... What is it? That's what I'd like to know. But, Mr. Lawrence, you've made a mistake. What kind of a forgivable one, I am sure, since you registered today. You see, this room has been occupied for weeks. Mr. Lawrence's room is across the hall. This was my room 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry, but it's off. Oh, no. Please, gentlemen. Vamos. You see, this is the door that was locked. And with Mr. Lawrence's key, Pretty bad, doesn't it? Not at all. This happens to be your room. Oh, this is your luggage? Uh-huh. Then what is the corpse you're talking about? Well, as we say in the States, he seems to be gone with the wind. What do you think? Me parece que el americano tiene delirium tremens. Delirium tremens, eh? This time we'll let it pass. But let me warn you, senor. If it happens again, we shall not be so lenient. Vamos. I'm so sorry about the mistake, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Please, you've got to let me out of here. Now, look here, Miss... Uh, this may sound silly, but I really would like to help you. 
A lot of very peculiar things have happened since we met, and I've got a feeling you could use some help. You know, if I knew what this was all about, there might be something I could do. You're very kind, and I'd like to explain, but right now I can't. You remember that cab driver? Yes. Well, he's not driving a cab anymore. He was murdered, and I was made to look like the goat. Yes, I know. You know? How? Oh. Well, I heard about it. I've got a hunch that Burns, the hotel manager, knows more than he's telling. You mean you think that he... Well, my room was switched, and he had to be in on it. I'm beginning to resent people thinking I'm somebody else. Well, I may be able to clear all this up if you let me go. Well, that sounds beautiful, but very familiar. The last time you made a call on a telephone that hadn't even been installed. Well, please, you've got to believe me. Well, I'm sorry. We're all out of belief today. How on gallon. It's been quite difficult getting to talk to you. Now we can talk undisturbed. I must apologize for the gun. But in my profession, it is best not to take unnecessary chances. I'm willing to pay you well for your information. Here we go again. Oh, but he doesn't know anything about it. Come now. Let's approach this sensibly. My country is very interested in getting your formula. And we are willing to buy it with money rather than bullets. Well, that's very nice of you. Then you are not willing to talk? On the contrary. Oh, please. Now, about that gentleman's agreement. Surely you and your sister... Sister? Rod, come here. Yes, sir. Take care of this gentleman. Yes, sir. Who, me? Jan, is anything wrong? Paul, I'm afraid we've really put Mike Lawrence in danger. Is Lawrence all right now? Well, I think so, but isn't it possible for you to finish your business and leave? Oh, it's been arranged. Thank heavens. Well, my appointment at headquarters is at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be leaving for Washington immediately afterward. As soon as I've gone, you can let the news drop that Mike isn't your brother. But until then, you've got to keep him out of trouble, Jan. I'll do my best, but Paul, I'm frightened. Please don't let anything delay you. What? All right, darling. Goodbye. See you in New York. Mr. Mike, I've been looking all over for you. Where's that man? That's what I'm looking for you for. He's gone. You let him get away? I told him he couldn't go, and I wasn't standing no foolishness. And before I realized what was going on, he swung at me, and I swung back, and... When I picked myself up off the floor, that man gone. He hit you? He didn't make no conversation, and I got a black eye to prove it. Well, that makes us even, Rod. I lost someone, too. With that man loose, what I'm going to do the least of tonight is sleep. Hey, what's good for catching an elusive blonde? Some like to pour salt on them. But I have a drink that catches blondes like magic. When I catch up with that man, I'll show him what a punch and die This is an actual working model of a transport plane. No attempt has been made to camouflage it. Now, this is a working model of an RAF Hudson bomber after it has been coated with the new protective paint. Even in miniature, you can see the difference to the eye. You see, the new protective paint is used to simulate both Earth 
and sky colors. This is done so that the planes are protected both from anti-aircraft guns below and from enemy aircraft above. Now, what it amounts to then is an advance in camouflage. No, oh, it's a perfect camouflage. Let me show you the paint in actual use. Uh, Lieutenant, would you mind cutting the light switch? Now, this first slide is a transport plane photographed under normal circumstances. Now, you can see that that plane makes a perfect target for enemy aircraft and ground defenses. Now watch. This is a picture of the same plane taken after it had been coated with the new protective paint. Remember, you're looking at that plane from close range. Enemy gunners would find it much more difficult to locate it. Now that's a third slide of the same plane with the background washed out in order for you to see the plane. It's amazing. Theoretically, that would turn the defensive forces into offensive forces. What do you suppose it would work under actual warfare conditions? There's a difference, you know. It has worked. Recently, abroad, three of these Hudson bombers, coated with paint, were flown over enemy territory. They bombed an important ammunition center without interference. I recall something about that. Uh huh. And it's been reported that not once were anti-aircraft gunners able to see the planes. That makes it one of our most important military secrets. Right. Now, we all know how vital it is that we protect the canal, which in case of emergency would be America's first line of defense. Until we have a two-ocean navy, the canal's the only means whereby we can maneuver our present fleet from one ocean to another speedily enough for modern warfare. What would be your plan of action? Just this. Our plan is to paint the locks themselves. An enemy bomber can't bomb what he can't see. That's true. And you've come at the right moment. We've just completed the installation of bomb nets on several of the locks. With your new paint, it'll make them almost impregnable. If the paint works as well as we think it's going to, America's canal defenses are going to be the strongest in the world. You've done a good job, Martin. Thank you, sir. Yes? Now, this Colonel Stoddard. Oh. Have them proceed immediately. Our bombers are ready for maneuvers. Would you like to see them before they're coated with your paint? Oh, yes, very much. There they are.
safely back to Washington after you've given our chemist the formula. We've heard about the attempts to get it. They have been rather persistent. An army escort will see you to your plane later in the evening. In the meantime, go to your hotel room and speak to no one. Right. Goodbye, Colonel Stoddard. Goodbye, Martin. And again, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Central Park, but the moon looks familiar. Central Park? Yeah, that's where all our young lovers go. <laughs> it is a beautiful evening, no? Uh-huh. That's our special dollar and a quarter sky, guaranteed not to fade. <laughs> I'm very fond of him. Yeah, he ought to have a name. Oh, but see a name. I think I would call him, uh, Mike Jr. <laughs> he has your eyes. I hope you've noticed there's a slight difference in our coloring. I think we should adopt him. Oh, definitely. I've always wanted the patter of little panthers around the house. <laughs> you know, this whole day has been a wonderful surprise. I didn't expect such a lovely guy to show me Panama, and, and I didn't expect Panama to show me such a lovely guy. <laughs> you say very sweet things, Senor Mike. I've been saving them for you. It uh, seems that you forget very quickly. Forget? Forget what? Oh, but you see, the girl you always look for. Oh. She no longer interests you? Say, if I had to pick one woman in the whole world to be marooned on a desert island with, I'd pick her. Then I'd have myself rescued. I suppose you think that very funny? Oh, what difference does it make? The night's young and we're together. That's the only thing that matters. Oh, we did! I've just learned that Paul Martin was at Army Headquarters today demonstrating the formula. He'll be going back to Washington and we haven't a moment to lose. We've looked for him everywhere. A few hours more will mean losing him entirely. Look, just coming into the lobby. Well, what is it? Well, that's Paul Martin. You two blockheads. Couldn't find your way out of a telephone booth. While you were looking all over Panama for Martin, he was right here at the hotel, posing as a newspaper man. But we tried to. Do you think you know what to do now? He's at 714. Get up there. We will meet again, Senor Mike? Sure. Next time I'll wear my catcher's mask. <laughs> excuse me, Mr. Mike. I got to talk to you privately. All right, Rod. Will you excuse me? But certainly, Senor. What's on your mind? I got corpse trouble. I've been hiding all day. Well, what are you talking about? I seen that corpse that was in your room. Well, where'd you find him? Find him? I didn't find him. He done found me. I, I, I guess I fainted. I knows I fainted. And when I woke up, he was gone again. I've been thinking that it'd be better for both of us to leave this place and go back to the States again. Oh, I can be mighty handy, Mr. Mike. Well, you may be right, Rod. I might as well get paid for getting into trouble. If I do go back, you've got a job. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Thank you, sir. Think nothing of it. Well, say, what does you all do? Oh, I'm an undertaker. Ow! I've done it again. Here's Martin now. Rainer, you killed him. There he is. Another way out of here. Uh, this way, quickly. If there is a ledge and the next apartment is empty, but please be careful. Well, wait a minute, they're liable to get a little rough if they find I'm gone. Oh, no, hurry, please. They will not harm me. It is you they are after. Okay.
Are you sure you haven't seen him? Oh. Thank you. Who is it? It's me, Miss Jan. Rod, have you seen Mr. Lawrence? No, ma'am, not for a while. I got a message for you, Miss Jan. A message? From whom? I don't know. I never seen the man before. Well, what did he say? It was a kind of a funny message. Let me see. Made me repeat it twice. He said, uh, there's some men taking your brother on a vacation, and, uh... My brother? But he isn't... Well, what else did he say? And said if... If, if you didn't want it to be a long vacation, you'd better come and see him. There's a car waiting to take you to him. I'd be mighty careful, Miss Jan. I will, Rob. And please don't say anything about this to anyone. No, ma'am, not a word. There's something about that man I don't like. Well, I don't know what more you want. I've told you the formula. There's nothing to it. You take a dry martini, uh, three grams of cement, a pound of cracked nuts. It won't work, Mr. Martin. Well, now, that depends on what kind of cement you use. We haven't any time to waste, Mr. Martin. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I was hoping we might whip up a little poker game. Have you ever seen what acid does to a man's face? I'm willing to offer you a fair deal. Well, now we're getting down to business. What's it worth to you? You're hardly in a position to bargain. Oh, I think I'm in a swell position. Remember, if anything happens to me, there goes your formula. I see. $10,000 and your life. That's as generous as I intend to be. OK. Uh, you know what the formula is for. Of course, the protective paint. Of course. Well, as I said, you take a dry martini, three grams of cement, uh, a pound of cracked nuts. I can make him talk. Never mind, Lay. We've arranged to have your sister join our little group. I think perhaps you will change your mind about talking. My sister? <laughs> you don't miss a trick, do you? <laughs> Hiya, sis. Hiya. Are you all right? So far. For your brother's sake, I hope you can persuade him to be sensible. But he doesn't know anything. We are not foolish, Miss Martin. All this was carefully planned. I assure you, your brother's attitude is very impractical, especially in view of the fact that you're both here. Yes, it would seem that way, wouldn't it? I don't imagine you brought her for that little poker game. Not quite. It's possible that something extremely unpleasant may happen to her. Yeah. Yeah, I thought of that. Well, all right, I'll talk, but the formula's in my room at the hotel. I also happen to know that the formula isn't written. You've memorized it, and I am getting... Yes? No, that's impossible. We have him here now. But I tell you, we... Yes! Are you quite sure? I'll attend to it immediately. You idiots. You got the wrong man. I tell you that is, Martin. He's the one we followed from the airport. We'll find out soon. Who are you? A flower girl. You're gonna need flowers. A strange sense of humor, hasn't he? Maybe I can make him laugh. Not just yet. Lock them in here. That'll keep them safe for a while. See you two later. You know, it's a funny thing at that. What is? Well, for two days I couldn't keep you in sight, and now I couldn't get rid of you if I wanted to. I'm really sorry about getting you into all this trouble. Oh, that's all right. When you heard they had me, you came anyway, didn't you? Aren't you? Knowing I wasn't your real brother. That took a lot of spunk, Miss... Uh, Jan Martin. Ah. Oh. Well, we got that settled anyway. You know, if you'd have explained this thing to me in the first place, I'd have been glad to try and help you. Oh, I know you would, but, but I didn't dare take the chance. I'm worried about that phone call. 
You've got to find some way to get out of here. I have a feeling my brother's in danger. Yeah. Wish somebody sent us a cake with a file in it like they do in the movies. Who is it? Your escort, sir. We've been sent to take you to your plane. And Colonel Stoddard said to hurry. Oh, all right. <clears throat> but there's been a slight change of plan. What's the idea? You'll find out. Come on. That just goes to prove it. Prove what? Trust the blonde every time. Imagine trying to open a lock with a hairpin. Well, you hear of people opening locks with hairpins. It might work. Don't you know you're supposed to sandpaper your fingertips? That's traditional. Oh. Marty. Well, how do you like that? I like it fine. From now on, blondes are my favorite people. Come on, let's get out of this rat trap. Uh oh Here comes our keeper to tuck us in. Stand over there. Hello. You know a lot of tricks, don't you? Yeah, I've had to use that one before. Come on. There is someone inside you may know. They've got Paul. All right, you two. Come on, bud. This is one round you lose. Get in the car, champ. Paul, cover him. I'll drive. Thanks a lot. Oh, and incidentally, I want to thank you for the impersonation. Oh, that's all right. It's sort of pleasant being somebody else for a change. faster than this.
more speed out of this bus. Say goodbye. Oh, you are leaving? Yeah, I'm going back to work. If I can't get away from excitement, I might as well take my salary with it. Oh, see, I heard about your bravery, Senor Mike. You were magnificent. Uh, what is it, Senor? Am I so unattractive? Oh, you did not think so in the past, no? Well, it's. Uh, yes, Senor. I guess you were right about that other girl. I'm really in love with her. What? In love with that skinny, dizzy blonde? She's not dizzy and she's not skinny. Oh, see. Si. And uh, can she kiss like this? Say, wait a minute. There's only one girl I know can kiss like that. A dizzy, skinny, wonderful blonde. Well, what do you know? <laughs> do you mind so terribly? I've always had a hankering to learn Spanish. <laughs> 